Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Our video yesterday was from Bend, Oregon, which by the way, I would say is a solid place to hang out and I would recommend for RVers. But we are heading out to Crater Lake National Park before heading to the coast. So kind of sad to leave this place. I wouldn't mind spending another, uh, you know, another couple days here. Very bikeable city. However, it's time to move on. We want to be out of the coast before the, uh, the end of the weekend. So let's hit the road. Crater Lake. It's kind of one of those things, sort of like, at least for me, it's kind of like with the Grand Canyon. You're like, there it is. All right. But at the same time, it's kind of interesting. Here's why. If you didn't know this already, we're part of the Cascade Mountain Range here. And in my opinion, uh, I mean, the Olympics are beautiful, right? The hands down, they're beautiful. The Rockies are cool. The Appalachians are neat, but the Cascades are the most beautiful mountains out there. And of course, it goes from British Columbia down to California. This crater was actually developed because this was a mountain and about 7700 years ago apparently it didn't just erupt and then blow its lid like mount st helens had but on the northeast corner apparently enough pressure had built uh, it blew that way it created a ton of caverns and, and and the magma would flow out and the, as the pressure ceased everything started to cool down it developed the crater because it actually collapsed in on itself which is really not how i would have imagined that that going basically the ground underneath of the mountain couldn't sustain the weight of the top of the mountain and it just fell in and then years of rainfall and snow melt and glacier runoff has filled the cavern uh to become crater lake yep it's still an active volcano i know that mount st helens is still an active volcano which is pretty cool i mean unless it explodes right but and i think rainier is also yep yeah, i'm pretty sure rainier is Living in Washington, and it's, it, this is part of the thing I think, I've been trying to figure out what is it that draws me back to Washington. Being around water is a huge thing for me. Even more so, I think, being around the mountains, having hills, having big blue, whew, it's windy out here. Having this beautiful, the layers to your landscape, right? That is, I think that's the biggest thing that draws me to Washington. Yeah, it's really beautiful here. Like everywhere you look, there's something beautiful to see. That's obviously we're in Oregon here, but I feel like you get more of this in Washington than you do. I mean, because you also have the Olympics up there and then you can see across the border to Canada. Ah, it's just, it is beautiful. Something that I actually think is pretty neat is the last earthquake that I had actually felt. We have earthquakes in Washington pretty frequently. I think definitely on a, like a monthly basis. Most of them we don't feel. Uh, but was the the last one that I remember was the Nisqually earthquake back in 2001, and it it shook our city, uh, and it did a couple million in damages, from what I, I recall. I don't think there were any casualties directly from the earthquake and the immediate damage. You know, one of the things about living in an RV is as long as we're not near something that falls on us, a tree or something like that, which it's not usually something where you know we have issues with. 
you know, we're actually in a pretty good shape, right? We're not going to have the building collapse on us, you know, in the event of an earthquake. And I know a lot of like new buildings are, they consider earthquakes uh, in the design of those buildings, but that is something to consider. And in the event of a volcanic eruption, we're also probably in the best shape of anyone considering that, well, basically uh, our home will survive the, the initial quake that may cause the eruption and we have everything we need. I mean, it's, it is a bug out vehicle, right? So uh, uh, I think the only time to be in really bad shape is if we were near the coast and there was a catastrophic, a catastrophic enough earthquake to cause the volcano to erupt and a tsunami to occur. And there's just no out running an earthquake, tsunami, and a volcano all at one time. Yeah, so, um, huh, I think we'll be all right. From uh, 2007 and 2008, I was actually a volunteer with our, our Snohomish County Search and Rescue team in Washington. And I think I got a really good taste for the Cascades and the beauty that it allows. It is pretty darn extreme uh, work, especially if you're not getting paid. And eventually, you know, my real job and my volunteer role kind of conflicted. But I think I got such great training and even more importantly, wilderness and hiking skills that I never would have gotten otherwise. And those are some hardworking folks. And I was also pretty pretty lucky as to volunteer with our canine uh, search team. So I was never a handler, but I did the uh, you know canine support. If you could buy the beauty of the Cascades or or you know that that lush remote wilderness with dogs, like you <laughs> now <laughs> if that's that's pretty great. And, and then you know obviously if you're one of the deputies assigned to the SAR unit that hands down is a trio that that would make your life I think it would make my life I don't I don't hike nearly as much anymore but I think that definitely has lent itself uh, to a more minimalist lifestyle because when you're out there you have more gear than the 10 essentials by far but I mean it tells you what you really need in life <laughs> and it gives you a lot of time to think when you're out there and obviously you don't just do it for fun you know you do it to help people but that, that'll set your priorities straight, I think. If anybody ever needs a, a hobby and they like to hike, join a volunteer search and rescue team. They even have uh, four by four rescues. That's something that, I, that we had talked about maybe rejoining, but we're just a little too nomadic now for it, but that'd be kind of fun. Mazama Village campground and they do have a dump station so as part of our fee for the entrance of the park we'll go ahead and grab some water and dump our tanks real quick. Might as well.
camping site out here just kind of off the road a little bit clearly other folks have camped here as well we thought that the road never ended so we walk down to this creek and we see this sign that says mill creek campground here and in washington national forest campgrounds are generally free here apparently this one's 15 bucks a night the other one we saw was 22 bucks a night and it depends on whether the campground host or not so our site's actually just outside of this boundary here obviously completely free it's just kind of funny we didn't know that there was a campground right here and we're right outside of it same access to the little creek here and kind of nice it's funny there's even a like a fire ring at the spot we stopped at or the forest rangers have come through and put a little flag in there with like a no no fire because there's fire bands right now i want to go and end this video right here camp for the evening beautiful peaceful dogs love it as you can tell <laughs> Yeah, I hopefully you enjoyed seeing Crater Lake. Definitely worth a visit if you're in the area. What a what a beautiful spot. But we'll see you in the next video. Bye guys. Bye.